The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. Very good evening and thank you for joining with us on Business Best this Friday night and this is a platform where we showcase the best in the business and we will be introducing to you people who have showcased the, uh, well in their particular fields in order to showcase their latest developments in their respective industry. So today on the show we'll be discussing on a software firm actually but not just an ordinary software firm, they have come up with new concepts that I feel that the world has not put their focus on at the moment. So it's my pleasure to invite uh, Sahan Yapa, who is the CEO of Spera Labs. And without taking any more of your time, uh, Sahan, thank you very much for joining with us on the show. And I would really like you to give our audience a brief introduction to what Spera Labs is all about and the services that you are providing along with your products. Go ahead, Sahan. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you uh, very much for having me here, Susan. And uh, Spera Labs is an idea, idea realization company which is empowered with uh, people who are, who, are, who are having experience and expertise in generalizing in ideas into reality. So we have experienced engineers who can convert ideas into reality. And uh, if we talk about the Spera, the name, name itself means the hope. Spera is hope in Romanian language. So with the hope, our vision is to be the hope for each and every living thing in this planet. We help people, businesses, environment, animals, every living thing in this planet to grow and survive with use of technology and uh, use of uh, the mental support and uh, physical support. And uh, when we are moving into the services segment, we started the company to provide software services, software solutions, which are, uh, which are customized according to the customer's requirement basically uh, that's what our main focus when we started but uh, moving on now we are providing services to uh, foreign clients even in Sri Lankan clients to generate artificial intelligence and also machine learning as well as this uh, industrial automation stuff as well when we're talking about industrial automation we can create devices from the scratch to the end of the device A to Z which means we can even create circuit boards to the chipset to the software which works on the device from the scratch. That's what our expertise. And also when we're talking about the products and solutions we have developed, we are the one who created the first and biggest artificial farm in the Sri Lanka two years back due to our client requirement. And uh, these days we are wor working on uh, creating that artificial farm concept into small subsets to provide our consumers. Because of its uh, small scale scalability and because of its uh, portability, that will be a massive, massive product for the market in upcoming years. And also moving on to uh, software field, we have developed a platform for e-commerce stores that is, uh, that is being live on the US, UK at the moment. With use of that platform, you can create e-commerce stores, e-commerce uh, websites easily with few clicks without even having any technological knowledge. And also moving on to that, moving on to the other part, we have a solution for healthcare industries as well. That's our main, main actually that's our first product which we created for the industry. That was a healthcare solution for private practices and private hospitals and even GPs. With that solution, we can, we can automate everything in the healthcare solution like everything in the hospital like uh, prescription creation and patient record maintenance and uh, even the internal processes like financial management stuff like that and also moving from there now we are focusing on automate automating things is robotics because i feel i feel most of the things we do as humans are repetitive most of the things we do in, in our country even in the world are repetitive so the real potential is in humanity is not doing repetitive work, right? So because of that, I thought to automate those things with robotics and have the real potential of humans to do something else, something big, 
right? So that's the main reason to move on to robotics. And these days we are working on a robot to help people with mental issues, mental issues in the sense mental health issues like, uh, like uh, I would say uh, depression. Depression, exactly depression. So that's our main focus uh, in these days with robotics. And uh, if you say uh, if if we take if we take uh, depression rate according to WHO, there are more than twenty two hundred million people having depression just because they have no one to talk their ideas, no one to share their thoughts. But if there is someone to talk, if there is someone to listen to them, the rate of this uh, depression rate will get reduced and also the risk of, risk of getting into that deepest level of depression also will get reduced. Right? And also, the number of deaths due to depression also will get reduced. That's where this robot comes into play. Our robot is comes into play in that, that area by being the spera, being the hope to people who are having depression. All right, Sahan, I think you gave what the introduction of Spera Labs in a nutshell. I would really like to touch on the fact of the robotics and the ability of them helping with mental health issues. But before that, you mentioned something about artificial farms. Why don't you give us an introduction of how that works? Yeah, in, uh, in artificial farming, actually what we do is we generate, we, we produce crops in an artificially generated environment without depending on any any external facts like natural facts we generate a, we generate a, i mean environment artificially including uh, artificial sunlight artificial carbon dioxide artificial nutrition water water we take but providing it artificially and nutrition and even uh, humidity we provide artificially and also we generate a uh, area with artificial uh, temperature as well so with that controlled environment we produce uh, produce crops so that's the artificial farming concept, basically. Oh, what is the advantage that you saw in doing this? Like, uh, aren't there any drawbacks of using these artificial products? Now, usually when we take farming, obviously the farmers are the ones who are watering the plants, who are putting the medicine. By using this artificial sunlight, artificial carbon dioxide, aren't there any drawbacks for the consumers? Yeah, of actually, these products? I would like to talk about both drawbacks and advantages. Uh, if we take advantages, the main advantage is we can we we can have it in any country anywhere because we don't have any dependencies of the of the environment, right? We can provide environment as they required, so we can have it anywhere, any country, in any time, and we don't have to depend on the time limitations as well. We can we can have reliable crop production over the year just because of this uh, artificial environment and also when we talk about the energy management when long term run long term run energy is saving a, a lot actually because let's say like sunlight even sunlight we provide electronically you know sunlight even the fertilizers water all these things are repetitively using so we don't waste any of those so in long term run energy is also saving and also when we talk about the space we can have a big farming space with a real with a small real physical space space that is another advantage there are actually a lot of advantages those are very uh, key advantages we can have and when we talk about the drawbacks there are no drawbacks for the consumers actually because we ensure the we ensure the quality of the product and the health issues everything we ensure so because of that there are no drawbacks for the consumers but if we talk about the producer there is a big drawback in the initial stage because for the infrastructure development they have to pay there will be a big cost for the infrastructure development initially that's all but even uh, that also will get covered over the time on the long run on the long run all right San. so has this concept already been introduced in our country and yes. is it in use yes, yes. Uh, around whereabout have you implemented these yeah actually that is that that we have implemented due to our, our, our one of our client requirement initially so that is there in uh, actually it's not in Colombo out of Colombo there there is the there is a farm and that's the biggest farm in Sri Lanka and uh, even now, nowadays we are working on some small small uh, small scale devices to implement on people's homes as well so that is uh, that is like a small uh, artificial farming component which you can have it on own home all right, Han. Uh, next, I would like to catch up on the topic of robotics and how you are, have implemented it to the effects of mental health and how you can help individuals uh, come out of that. Could you explain how that actually works? Yeah, actually, this is how it works. 
let's say uh, these depression issues most of the things as i mentioned earlier most of these depression related things comes because they are, when they are there are no one to talk those ideas you know when there is something some problem and those things when there is no one to talk right if there is someone to talk and someone to identify that mental issue at the at the correct time and if they can implement a solution in the te- in the correct time then the the person will get uh, get out of that zone right that mental zone so that's what we do with robotics with our robotics uh, we can identify the patients the patients uh, mental issues with eye patterns and facial recognition even lip sizes and all everything we can we can identify with those kind of things and even vocal patterns and uh, skin toners those kind of things we can identify the uh, the the specific uh, mental mental issue of the person so with use of that we use nlp called neuro neurolinguistic programming neurolinguistic programming patterns using neurolinguistic programming patterns we treat the patient as a human so we all are generator we all are created with neuro programs what we feel what we think real what we do real what we feel real all are just because of the neurolinguistic patterns in our brain so we train all of those patterns to the bot robot so robot knows neurolinguistic programming and robot knows how to reprogram a brain brain so with that with use of that we take the patient out of that zone using neurolinguistic programming that's how the robot works uh, basically there are some some things to say but for the moment i can't reveal all the things for media so hopefully right, yeah uh, there there are more things that i want exactly. to know as well so before that let's go into a short commercial break you're watching business best we'll be back soon Welcome back to Business Best and we are in discussion with Sahan Yapa who is the CEO and founder of Spera Labs. Sahan, I think you gave a very good introduction to what Spera Labs is all about and before the break I had to stop you once you gave the introduction to robotics. So when you gave the explanation, uh, this is actually a robot and a system having in contact with a human, but usually when it comes to mental health issues, I feel that that person would prefer another human being to talk to. So, do you f- think that there are any drawbacks by another machine or a robot handling mental issues with a human? Uh actually Susan, let's say let's say a human is interacting with another human, a human is taking care of another human, still there are drawbacks, right? Still, of course still yes. we can't we can't guarantee that person is 100% uh, secure we can't right the same thing is there with robotics and also the other thing is robots with a- the, with this ai robots ai learning over the time through the people uh, the ai with and the and the time and the physical activities and all ai learns itself and grows itself so there are issues there can be issues ai can be disruptive even but exactly. we take all the precautions we can to avoid that but we can't say 100% safe because ai can be disruptive have you already tested this concept is it initiated already uh, yeah actually not ai ai, AI with nlp neuro linguistic programming not implemented yet but at the moment we are working on these uh, uh internal routing things and uh, taking uh, these facial expressions getting those into machines those are working at the moment uh, we have a model which works with all those things but neuro linguistic programming we still training to our ai models right so uh, with the discussion we had uh, before this program actually outside uh, you mentioned that your target market is the international market at this point why do you uh, why are you targeting the international market and not the market here the local market in sri lanka Uh, yeah very good question actually we have some products to sri lankan markets as well even now we have uh, we have uh, providing ser- we have provided services to sri lankan market as well but the thing is the technology adoption rate of the foreign countries are really higher than sri lanka so what we do is we implement those in there test it and after few years we can take it here and also when we are providing services to foreign countries the foreign currency also comes here right so uh, we we are we are uh, we are helping our nation to grow with uh, foreign currency incomes as well 
with the export market. All right. So do you think uh, the market here in Sri Lanka will be acceptable of these new concepts that you've brought? Definitely, yes. But I don't think now. But eventually it will. The thing is, as I mentioned earlier, people are doing so many repetitive ta tasks, right? Sri Lanka, it's more than uh, any other country. If we can automate those tasks and if we can have the real potential, true potentials of Sri Lankans to do something else, something more, this country will be a beautiful place to live. So we can do it, I'm pretty sure. All right, San. <laughs> so what is your next step uh, with your business? Is yeah. there anything else in mind for the future? Yeah, actually, uh, we recently uh, got our company registered on Australia and we are going to uh, move, uh, expand it into the US as well. With those, we are going to expand our products and services to those countries as well. But the thing is, we take all the foreign incomes to Sri Lanka with those. So nothing to worry, even if we expand. That's our main thing. And also, this is just an idea. Uh, first time I'm telling to someone else, actually to media. We, we are thinking of creating space shuttles as well, but I'm not confirmed yet. We had some connections in US. Those, uh, those people need to uh, do those kind of things. And we have expertise, we have people with patents, uh, some related stuff as well, patents for some related stuff as well. So we are thinking, but not yet started or confirmed, but we are thinking of working on space related things as well, because that is the future. Right, Sam, that is very interesting to hear. When it comes to this software or IT industry, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face so far? And then obviously the pandemic took place and most of the businesses were affected. Were you also affected in any sort of way and what were the biggest challenges that you faced? Yeah, actually, uh, I don't say a pandemic is good, right? But before the pandemic, uh, I will say, say it in this way actually, before the pandemic, our team size was less than 30. After pandemic, our team size is 30 to 40 now. Right. Uh, so we got expanded with the pandemic and also the biggest challenge I face so far is, even, even if I'm talking with you, giving these ideas, you feel most of these seems like crazy, right? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, the biggest challenge I faced so far was finding the right talent with positive attitude to do these crazy things. Because most of the people don't believe in this. We have done so many things already, right? But no, most of the people don't think. I initial stage, initially, when I was starting the company, it was a 10 by 10 room, right? So people came to the room and I was, I was interviewing. They, none of them were got, uh, I mean, impressed by the things I say. They felt like I'm a crazy person, that's all, right? But some people were there who believed in me, still they are, they, they are, they are in my team. They are senior positions now. So the thing is that was the, that was the biggest challenge I faced so far. The finding the right people with skill set who believes in our crazy ideas and who, who are with uh, the positive mindset. That was the biggest challenge. Uh, other than that, each and everything I faced was uh, like opportunity for me. Uh, are you facing that uh, problem at the moment okay at right now? Totally okay, totally okay. We have a very good team now. So they're Crazy completely team. accepted with whatever the concept that Exactly, you because the thing is now people are joining. People are actually eager to join now because we have proved that. We have proved that we, we can do that. We already proved we have developed so many products, even the company uh, then and now is a proven thing. All right, Sian. So other than these concepts that you have come up with and the products and services that you all are following, I saw this in your website that you all are doing so many CSR projects as well. Why don't you give our audience a little bit about that, the projects that you all are handling at the moment and helping the community? Yeah, actually, uh, being hope is our vision, right? Being hope doesn't mean being hope for businesses so individuals who need to uh, do things do things in the sense of business related things right so we need to help people low animal low even nature to uh, survive and grow up so we segment it into four parts we help uh, people who need care and attention and love we help people who uh, we help the next generation and we help the nature to survive and grow up and we help animals so with those what we do is, uh, if we take the first segment, each and every month we select a, uh, we select a specific uh, elder's home and we go there 
and provide what they need and just uh, spend some time with them, share some love, that we do. And uh, when we talk about the next generation, children. So we help children who needs to who needs help, right? There are so, so many children in rural areas, even in Colombo, who needs help. So we help them each and every month we do some sort of work. And also when we talk about the nature, we, we, uh, we, uh, we have a program in our company, inside the company, uh, by planting a tree every week. Every week pl we plant a tree. That's one. And also there is another program to feed animals, stray animals, stray, stray dogs. We feed like hundreds of dogs each and every week. So those are the things we do to be the hope for them actually. I really like that potential and the concept that you have with the CSR projects as well. And again, coming back to your target market, are you focusing at the moment with industrial market or are, is there a platform where individuals also can reach out to you? Yeah, actually, uh, we at the moment, we do B2B businesses, B2B target. We have, we have software solutions and products which are available for C cost consumers as well. But the thing is, they can't at the moment in Sri Lanka, they can't directly reach out to us. But our focus is B2B market, business to business. If someone needs to automate their business tasks, even in software or even industrial automation with uh, devices, robotics, so stuff like that, we are there to help them. All right, Sahan. Unfortunately, I think this is all the time we have on the program. I really wish that we had more time to discuss all about your interesting concepts that you've come up with the Spera Labs. Again, thank you very much for joining with us on the show and I wish you all the best for your future plans as well. Thank you, Susan. And that was the end of our episode on Business Best tonight. Join us again next week where we'll be we will be introducing to you another new, brand new service or a product or an individual who has a story to share. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.